Thank you for joining me today for a few moments in God's Word. It's amazing that we are right at the beginning of May 2024. A lot has happened this year and time seems to be flying uh, as we've started this new year and here we are at the beginning of May. The beginning of May, historically, uh, referred to as May Day, and uh, historically it has been recognized as um, a, a day that uh, commemorates uh, the, those in the workforce. Um, it's celebrated, initially observed as an ancient uh, Northern Hemisphere Spring Festival that was between uh, spring and summer and uh, became associated with the labor mo movement in the late 19th century after trade unions <clears throat> and socialist groups designated as a day of support for workers uh, for better working conditions and fair wages and uh, the hours in a day that people would work. It started out as a pre-Christian holiday celebrated throughout Europe, especially among the Gaelic people who called it Beltane. So it was a pagan holiday and it marked the halfway point between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. But uh, I want to focus on a, uh, a few thoughts today that are just a little different than uh, the labor force uh, for a nation or a community and those involved in it, but a biblical perspective. And would like to turn to Exodus chapter 20, verse 9 through 10. Uh, Exodus 20, 9 and 10. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son nor daughter nor your male or female servant nor your animals nor any foreigner residing in your towns and um, uh, for, for a long time it's been looked at as the international labor day may the first and uh, it celebrates the workforce and the laborers but as we mentioned that we look at the scripture and God has a specific plan for the number of days that we could be involved in working. And then he established uh, in Exodus 20, what we call the Sabbath day. And it is the day that he rested from his labors. Go clear back to, to Genesis. And uh, on the seventh day he rested and uh, we've tried to keep that as a principle because it's one of the commandments. Uh, it has three principles uh, in that two verses of 9 and 10 of Exodus 20. First six days you shall work. Seventh day is the day of rest. And the third principle is keep the seventh day. This is the fourth commandment in the Ten Commandments keep it holy and rest in it. And so it's important uh, for us as believers that we strive to uh, honor God's word and God's plan. I want to look at that just a little bit as we talk today and share with you these things about uh, this day, the first day of May. Uh, with the ideas of what it says in Exodus, and that is that God ordained for man to work. Uh, we're living in a time where more and more people, uh, and I would say that a lot of younger people, younger aged, uh, young adults, uh, and in the teenagers, uh, we're living in a world at a time where people are really abandoning the perspective of working and earning your way, learning a craft and developing a skill and taking care of not only yourself, 
but if you choose to have a family, to work whatever you need to do to provide for your family. And this is a God-ordained principle uh, that we find there in Exodus 20, verse 9 and 10, uh, that God ordained for man to work six days and on the seventh day to rest. There's something. There's a principle for working. And if you look at uh, uh, the Old and New Testament, uh, there's a principle that is taught that if you uh, choose not to work, that then you don't eat. Uh, it is important to understand that you provide for yourself and for your family. And hopefully, uh, if you are obedient and do what God has asked you to do, uh, and you find something to do that brings an income in, from that income, you receive a blessing and you can buy provisions and you can provide for yourself and your loved ones. And as God blesses you, you have the capability very often to be able to even help others. So we look at not only the labor, but the blessing that comes from the labor, the feeling of having integrity and character, being able to take care of yourself and, and not depending on others, but uh, doing what is necessary to cover your own requirements and needs and doing the best you can. And then God says that he would bless that. And uh, you find this also in Mark chapter 6, verse 31 through 33. Work is ordained, and God says if we do work and labor, there will be a harvest, which is a blessing, and that he will multiply our blessings if we do it with the right heart, right spirit, do it as unto the Lord, and do it honestly with integrity, that God will see to it that what our needs are, are met through the effort that we extend. Uh, if you want to enjoy life and have a longer life, and if you want to be blessed in the efforts that you make and your family that you bring into this world, the Lord says, labor, work six days, earn what you need. And most people in the world do not work six days. They work four to five and there's a there's some that work seven and work multiple jobs just to get by but jesus himself uh said my father has been working until now and i have been working that's in john chapter 5 verse 17 so it's not something that the lord was just teaching as a principle in the old testament with the commandments and then in the new testament teaching his disciples but <clears throat> Uh, it was taught in the churches as a principle that a person of faith, a person that believed in God and believed in right and moral character uh, and righteous living was a person that worked and uh, got things accomplished and took care of their responsibilities. And uh, I'm convinced that if John 5, 17, my father worked and I have been working, Jesus said. And uh, it also says he who is idle or idles his time away in the six days uh, is a slothful person and has not only wasted his opportunity because of his idleness, inactivity, in uh, uninvolvement in work, uh, that he will not have anything to benefit or be blessed because he has chosen to be idle or lazy. God commanded man to till the ground in Genesis 2.15 and 3.19. And uh, also uh, the command to work six days in a week, Exodus 29, as we've read in Deuteronomy 5.13. And scripture teaches that God knows what we're doing. He knows our labors. He knows our effort. He knows our motivations. He knows if our heart is in something. And uh, he, he, he records that. He keeps track of what we're doing. There are times that I've worked for uh, 
minimum wage. Uh, I remember many, many years ago after I first got married, uh, I was trying to help out at a Bible school working for no pay and, uh, uh, <coughs> pardon me, and uh, the only job I could find at that time was through a, a business called Manpower and you just reported, came to where the office was of this company and be there early and uh, people would come by to pick up laborers and people would call and say, I need people to do this and that. I did all kinds of things, but out of that, just doing what was available, even though it was minimum wage. And I think at that time, it was like a dollar 55 or a dollar 60 an hour. And uh, uh, out of that came a very good paying job and an offer from a man after I'd worked for him for several months, he offered to start another location of the business uh, and uh, set me up with the equipment and everything that I needed to do the business. And uh, I ended up taking a church in, in Arizona. At that time I was in Colorado. And uh, he said, I'll even pay to start a business uh, and you run it and I'll take a percentage and you uh, take a percentage and pay for the expenses of the business and uh, God honors effort when you do the best you can do with what you have not only has God ordained that we labor and we'll be blessed by it but he's promised that he will make it stretch and meet the needs of what we have and he's done that throughout my lifetime and I imagine for many of you that are listening today. Um, uh, when the Lord encourages us to respect the law of God, the plan of God, the Ten Commandments, labor six days on the seventh day rest, he is teaching us how to replenish and refresh not only our physical body, but to replenish and refresh our relationship with him and have a spiritual time with the Lord every week. Uh, we need to do our labor with wisdom and integrity, knowledge, equity, interest, and uh, with the right attitude. If we do that, God's promised a blessing. He's promised a reward. Blessings are ordained for all who obey and follow the Lord's plans. Jacob says that the Lord has seen my labor and rewarded me. He has seen the labor of the bonded slaves at Egypt. That's Genesis chapter 31, verse 42, Deuteronomy 26, verse 7. And it says that the Lord hears our cries. He sees the injustices that are done. He labors with us. He is present in our labors and in our leisure. He's with us when we're working. Uh, he's with us as things are being calculated and we get our pay and then we go to buy the things that we need and the Lord has promised to stretch and to bless and multiply to us the things that are needed. And uh, I've found that the Lord is very generous and he causes uh, not only our needs to be met, but he can give us the desires of our heart and blessings and 10,000 besides scripture says. Uh, Psalm 127 verse one says, unless the Lord builds, everything is in vain. And uh, we wanna partner with God in our workplace and in the things that we're doing. We wanna invite the Lord uh, before we go to bed at night and anticipating that tomorrow the sun will rise and we will be reporting for our responsibilities. Ask God to give us refreshing rest. Ask, to ask him to renew our strength. Ask him to give us wisdom and discernment and favor in the efforts that we will extend. And uh, as we do that, we'll see that when we spend our labor uh, time and our energy and emotion uh, and efforts in the workplace that if we partnered with God and invited him and asked him to help us and to bless and to give us favor with those around us, we'll see that the Lord will work through things that otherwise 
could be very difficult, sometimes very devastating, the things that happen in a workplace. But God would be with you and he will bless you and prosper you in all your ways, scripture says. And he allows us and blesses us to eat from the labors of our hands, Psalm 128, verse 2. Uh, the Proverbs throw some important lessons about labor. The wages of the righteous bring life, the Proverbs says. God blesses the savings done in a little bit and a little bit and a little bit until it is enough. Uh, it grows slow but steady, God's favor. Uh, the wealth through labor of integrity, all labor when done with the right heart and right attitude and spirit will produce profit and blessings. Now those, you can find that in Proverbs 10, 16, 13, 11, and 14, 23. God uh, wants us to be involved in the process of provision, planting the seed and harvesting, cultivating, weeding, protecting the crop. And uh, uh, we don't want to just chase the wind and hope that life turns out. We need to invest and plant and harvest and see the Lord have an opportunity to prosper us. Uh, every night we should speak to the Lord about our, our spirit, our mind, our soul, our body, our heart, the things that we're going to be uh, planning Psalm 116 verse 7 return unto thy rest O my soul for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee isn't that a wonderful verse uh, every time that we find ourselves short in strength and rest and ability or knowledge that need to help us accomplish what needs to be done we need to invite the Lord to partner with us and give us discernment and wisdom and favor and ability to be able to accomplish what needs to be done. Rest is ordained by God for mankind. It's one of the themes that runs in every book of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. In Genesis, God rested on the seventh day, Genesis 2-2. In Revelation, we're promised an eternal rest. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. They will rest from their labors. But one of the things that we're going to see is when the Lord comes back and those that have died in faith and obedience to God and have done their best in life, uh, the Lord's going to bring the reward, eternal rewards that we did not enjoy or get here on earth. There will be those rewards and blessings throughout eternity with the Lord. Um, uh, we look at... Uh, some scholars who have recognized in Deuteronomy a explicit uh, information, uh, maybe more specific regarding the Sabbath commandment, its distinctive formulation of the Ten Commandments, and it is at the center of the pattern of life. God says it is important for us to invest our mind, our heart, our soul, and our body uh, in providing for our loved ones, providing for ourselves, and providing for the people of God and those who are less fortunate that we come in contact with. And uh, the Sabbath commandment is so critical because if we don't keep that and don't keep our faith and, and, and uh, enter into worship and enter into meditation and study. It's a type of work, but it's more a developing and a cultivating of your faith and your relationship with God. If you don't do that, your abilities, your wisdom, your discernment, and uh, the way your heart and emotions react during the week where you're working at your job and taking care of the things that are, you're responsible for are less effective because you haven't kept your relationship with God and you haven't given him the time that he suggested you need for your mind, body, soul, and spirit and with him to keep it holy. Uh, the study that we're trying to accomplish is to help us 
be consistent with our perspective of life. Don't allow the challenges or the failures or the disasters, the troubles of life to defeat or discourage or make you throw up your hands and say, I quit. Just keep doing your best. Keep focused on what needs to be done and do your best to accomplish it. Ask God for favor. Ask him to work alongside you and to make the way for prosperity and blessing in your life. Uh, there are many dangers in life. <clears throat> Two of those dangers, especially to Christians, is the danger of excessive activity that's not spending time and strength and emotion and spirit in doing something that's going to bring a reward. Uh, one of the things that I see in our world today at every age level that people are very involved with the internet and the media and uh, games and things, entertainment and things that really distract you and rob your time and emotion and leave you without rest. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they say they can't rest, but one of the worst things you can do when you're not resting is to uh, get on your phone or get on TV or play games because it gets you so geared up emotionally and get your mind working in such a gear that your body can't shut down and relax. And it's very important that you get your rest and that you prepare yourself with rest and do what's important uh, and don't waste your time. Don't be idle and don't allow yourself to be excessively distracted by things that are gonna keep you from having a reward and a blessing from God. Uh, without work and strength to accomplish the work, you're going to fail in your labors. Uh, the second danger that I would want to say to you today is there's too much attitude of just withdrawing. So many people want the government of all ages, want the government just to take care of them. People that are coming from foreign countries, they come here and they want America just to give them their homes and give them uh, the government to give them money and give them credit cards and take care of their benefits and uh, a lot of it's political and it's deceptive and manipulative but when people come in and they really don't have a heart to work and invest their strength and time in providing for themselves and their families they're not coming to help themselves and they're coming not with the intention of helping America. I believe that's a, a tremendous mistake uh, for us to invite people to come that do not have right motivation to take care of themselves and their family, their own needs and responsibility. And uh, devotion uh, and commitment to the priorities of scripture and the priorities of God and the priorities that we each have as individual people we need to take care of ourselves and live within our means to the best of our ability. We need to eat food and rest. Jesus told his disciples about the importance of food and rest and to get away from the noise and the situations that create uh, strife and trouble and uh, get away from responsibilities and refresh yourself and spend time with the Lord and refresh your spirit and spend time in the Holy Spirit so that you are getting wisdom and knowledge and understanding to be able to make a difference. Don't allow your life just to be lived and nothing of significance takes place. No investment, no reward, uh, no uh, planting of seed and no harvest leaves you when you stand before God. The Lord will say, what have you done with the years and the time, the strength, the body, the knowledge, the wisdom, the opportunities that I gave you. What have you done with that? And the Bible says we will give an answer. So we need to not have an attitude of indifference and uh, that we want others to take care of us, but have a commitment and a consecration not only to our walk with God, 
but to taking care of our own health, our own responsibilities to the best of your ability. We can't do it all, can't make it always work. We can't fix everything, but we need to at least try. And we need to partner with the Lord and ask him to make our efforts productive and let there be blessing and harvest. Uh, if we work without resting, we're not going to be able to accomplish what needs to be done. Accidents can happen. Things can go wrong because we are not feeling well and we're not alert. Uh, we're sluggish because we didn't get good rest. Uh, we stay up and uh, don't really prepare ourselves spiritually so the anointing is not able to really flow uh, around us and upon us and through us. So we need to really focus. Deuteronomy 12, 9 has an important thought. It, Cana was the promised land, and it was also called the resting place. That if you could just get with the Lord, get to the promise of God, get to the provision, get to the storehouse of the Lord, and get to a relationship of love and commitment, a surrender and yielding to the Lord, allowing him to lead you and guide you and to walk with you, uh, that's when blessing comes. That when That's when you can be refreshed. Your heart and mind and soul can be at peace and your body can function uh, under the blessing and the help of the Lord. The true resting place is in the Spirit, in the presence of the Lord, in His Word, in worship, uh, to spend time with the Lord, especially on Sabbath day, is a sacred command and a sacred responsibility. It is a wonderful time to be able to grow in God and to be refreshed. Two verses, and then I'll let you go. Second Chronicles twenty seventeen. You will, you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord that He's going to bring. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Uh, God's going to make a way in every situation, in every workplace, no matter how desperate it becomes. I want you to know when you walk in the Spirit and you walk with God and you've been obedient to the Lord and you offer up a sacrifice of praise by the fruits of your labor and the fruits of your lip, you will develop a relationship with God that God will bless you. Uh, and then closing with Isaiah 40, verse 29 through 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So as we just take a little time to realize here we are at the beginning of the fifth month of 2024, the month of May, and historically the thoughts that went with it and bringing a little bit of scripture to focus on doing your best and knowing that God is with you and he's going to help you to be successful. May God richly bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Amen.